Hello again, and welcome to SCLC TV. I'm your host, Maynard Eaton, and of course, our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. This week, we mourn the loss of two great black political leaders. Dr. Steele, Congressman John Conyers, the man who founded the Congressional Black Caucus, the man who also pushed through the Martin Luther King Jr. legislation, a significant figure in, our, in our, the life of black folks. You know, absolutely, he was a friend of the SCLC. I remember, um, Maynard, we was having, uh, actually having a state convention. Our state president at the time was Reverend John Nellis, and it was in Addison, Alabama. And uh, he was going to be our keynote speaker for our banquet. And everybody kept saying, Reverend Nellis is, is getting close to our banquet. Said, uh, we have to go pick up Congressman John Conyers at the airport. And when they say airport, they're not talking about in Alabama. They're talking about in Atlanta which is about 90 miles away. We got to go pick him up at the airport. And I never will forget this, Reverend Nell said, you don't have to go to the airport. They said, what? He riding the Greyhound bus. <laughs> Mater, I never thought that a man of that caliber with that station in life as a congressman would go, uh, come from all the way from Detroit, Michigan, to Addison, Alabama on a Greyhound bus. But he started the Black Caucus and ushered in the legislation to make the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Absolutely, he was a co-founder to the Congressional Black Caucus. That was others, but he was one of the main leaders, of course, uh, Congressional Black Caucus. And uh, I would like to say that uh, he worked very harmoniously with others in terms of getting things done for poor people and people of color. Don't forget, he had none other than uh, Ms. Rosa Paul in terms of his office, mm -hmm. working there in Detroit and so forth. Uh, when she couldn't get a job nowhere, as you know, because of her reputation, what she had done, people hear about the stories of Dr. King and others, but even with those type of successes and accomplishments, it's hard for people to get a job. Nobody want to fool with you. Even though they applaud you, they're afraid of you in terms of what you might do. How did he get that done? The Martin Luther King Jr. legislation, that was really political gamesmanship and deal wheeling and dealing, was it not? Absolutely. Well, first of all, we need to realize that uh, Congressman Conyers along with others in the Congressional Black Caucus, and some fair-minded thinking folks on both sides. You know, couldn't, couldn't have done it without that. But the point being, to stay, stick with him, is, is the fact that it didn't happen overnight. It took 10 years. And Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Lord bless her soul, she was right there diligently working with him. And guess who else? Stevie Wonder. That song. Oh, I love it. I never forget when I first heard that song on his birthday riding from Birmingham to Tuscaloosa for whatever reason. I heard that song, Happy Birthday uh, to Dr. King. Man, that was a moving type of experience. And that's what took it to the point of being passed by Congress. We also mourn the loss of a local Georgia state senator, Leroy Johnson, who in 1970 got the license from Muhammad Ali to box again. When I first came to Atlanta 15 years ago, none other than state representative Tyrone Brooks was always telling the story about uh, uh, none other than the Honorable uh, Leroy Johnson. And I had the opportunity to meet him. And in stature, you know, he's, he's, he's a, a man of character, uh, even physically. When he, he embraced the, the room, you can feel something special about it. And just think about the time that he was trying to get a license for Muhammad Ali. Did you say 1970? Yeah. And the other stands that he made along the way, Many times standing alone. Yeah. And man, that's what leadership is all about. That's why young people need to get involved. You just can't pop in a seat without knowing the historicity of what we've gone through and what we must go through in the future. I had a speaker at my Clark Atlanta University journalism class today who said, told the young people, said, you always need to get a relationship with somebody at least 20 years older than you. Hello. Oh, Mr. E, not like that. At least 20 or 30 years older than you. Be on that relationship. See, what's wrong with the world today, and you know this is my pet peeve. This society throughout the world, not just America, but throughout the world, put labels on folks. 
When you say 20, 30 years old, oh, I don't want to fool with no old folk, but those old folks led the way for you. Those old folks not old like you think they are. All the blessings that I'm receiving right now, I prayed for 50 years ago. But also, you learn from these, this era of folk who are passing away. Absolutely. You these giants. All of these giants. I was around John Conyers, Congressman John Conyers, in Detroit when I was going to school at Oakland University, uh, working at Chrysler, eight mile in my own plant. John Conyers was a legend, still a legend, will always be a legend, but you be impressed and learn from those type of giants. As we mentioned last week, that we're coming to the end of an era. It's your turn. This is SLC TV. I'm Maynard Eaton.